It's time now for our weekly business of equality segment. And there is no point in having a good diversity strategy without the culture of inclusion. So says Jess McNicholas, head of global inclusion, diversity and corporate citizenship, EMEA at State Street. I think there's been such a lot of focus on, on, on diversity and quite rightly so on having a diverse workplace and diverse, diverse employees. However, if you haven't got a culture that is inclusive, then you, know, you can have the most diverse workforce in the world, but if your culture is not one that's open and that's transparent and that respects diversity of thought as well as inclusive that everybody can be themselves, then it's, it's an even harder battle to, to, uh, to overcome. From where you're sitting, what do you think financial firms are doing right in terms of inclusion and also, secondly, the challenges that they still haven't really met? I think we've seen significant focus, you know, and certainly in financial services on um, what, what organizations are doing around gender representation. Um, certainly the, um, the rollout of the gender pay gap in the UK has been significant. The launch of the Women in Finance Charter here in the UK has really put a lot of focus on, on what organizations are doing around gender representation. Um, however, there's more work to be done still in that space, but now it's about broadening that beyond the other aspects of diversity. What are organizations doing around disability? in the workplace, LGBT inclusion, also race and ethnicity, and, and making sure there is that representation across organizations as well. Yeah, it seems like the movement, especially in the business community, has a lot of been to push women forward, yeah. but less so on what you're saying on, on other um, groups and minorities that are as well making businesses less diverse. Yeah, I, I think organizations and certainly at State Street we're doing a lot of work in that in the space of supporting the other aspects of diversity. And um, but you know gender is probably the easiest one to tackle in the first place. Right. Because it's easy to collate that data and to be able to easily um, understand what your gender representation is in your workplace. However with the other aspects of diversity it's more challenging. I want to ask you about data. How do you think data is being used to tackle this problem? I think from a gender perspective it's important. It, sh it shouldn't be just the only thing that everyone's focused on. Um, however, it is important to start with the data. Um, so I think once you, you know, as a financial services company, if you can measure it, it gets done. So that's an, an adage that goes across, not just from a diversity and inclusion perspective, but across, uh, across a business perspective. It is important to be able to have the data and the numbers and to track your progression and how you do that is through monitoring your data. State Street has been putting a lot of pressure on some companies in the US, the UK and Australia that just have male only boards. How is that going? I mean we've been um, really impressed by the, um, the the reaction that has been to the fearless girls certainly in, in the US and uh, in other locations and um, I think it's important for organizations you know to really to stand up and be counted for what they're doing around that um, and so we're very very pleased that you know we're we're being one of many organizations that are they're starting to move the dial on that about the fearless girl campaign it was such a had such a big impact in New York I remember it where else do you think you'll you'll take it I mean, we're, as I said, we're so pleased with the, the impact that that's had and what's, even in just generating conversation around um, gender representation on boards. Um, we are in negotiations at the moment um, with the City of London Corporation about potentially bringing a, a replica of the Fearless Girl um, to London at some stage.